Welcome back to the comic book ASMR artist. Today we're going to be looking at um, some of my favorite um, musicians here. Obviously, you know the title. We're looking at uh, my Beatles collection here. And uh, the Beatles are a group that I have loved since my childhood, thanks to my father, a lot of it. Because, um, you know, he listened to classic music at the time. Oldies, as we would call them. But, uh, yeah, so I just kind of grew up with the love of the Beatles. And somebody's showing off um, all sorts of stuff. And a lot of it I've recently acquired here. And um, some of it is stuff that I've wanted for a while that I just kind of was able to throw in here so I could make this great video for you all. So, hope uh, that this either puts you to sleep or relaxes you. And uh, you get to enjoy some of this cool stuff if you're a big Beatles fan like I am. So, uh, first off, we have these great... Um, McFarlane Toys Beatles Yellow Submarine figures. And actually, uh, during our vacation in Idaho this, this past um, couple weeks ago, uh, I stumbled across a, um old antique place with collectibles and stuff. And they had three out of four of the Beatles, and the boxes were dinged up and stuff. And basically, it was $50 for the three. And so I was like, well, I can't pass that up. So they had... Um, they had John, Paul, and George with no Ringo, and, uh, I had had one of these when I was a kid, which was the Ringo, uh, who was boxed with the Blue Meanie, and what I noticed was when I got these, the pairing of what they came with was different, so... Um, I realized when I opened it up that these were reissues here, um, and they switched the pairing of what everything was with. So George had, um, the Blue Mini with him when my original one that I bought, uh, back in 99 had the Blue Mini with Ringo here. So, I'm gonna show off just kind of the fun details. They're not super poseable, but they're more or less just a kind of you know, look at and display. And I, th I think they did a fairly good job. Uh, Todd McFarlane is always very great about... very great about noticing details. One thing I did notice, though, is the Ringo, in the, in the movie, he's got kind of some stranger eyes uh, for most of it that I've seen. He's got, like, almost, like, uh, black around the, like, the outside of his uh, eye, too, here. So it's almost like it makes, like, this little white circle that has a black dot, and then there's a, uh, another, you know, another ellipsis or whatever you want to call it of black around that eye and this one doesn't have that he's got kind of like the little pharaoh uh eyelash thing a little bit but uh, i'll show you when i'm showing you some other stuff here um what that looks like yeah so these all came out initially uh whenever the um yellow submarine was being uh reissued again on vhs and dvd in 1999 and uh, during that time, that was actually around the time my dad actually got sick and uh, died a month later with cancer. So, yeah, I remember um, when I got the Ringo with the Blue Meanie um, shortly thereafter, my, my dad had passed away. So I think that's probably why I didn't get the rest of them, because money was kind of like tight at that time. Even though these were a lot of money at that time, but I think that just kind of, you know derailed me a little bit um but yeah so i never got to get the other ones it just had ringo with the blue meanie here and then we have uh jeremy the nowhere man he's got one of the little black holes there and he's supposed to have a bunch of other little black holes with him but um mine didn't have those other ones and then we have the nice little glove here and his mouth does move it doesn't stay though so it's kind of it's 
spring loaded that's on a love base and it moves around so really cool here so i've got these and then at that time i vaguely remember seeing this here this is captain fred with paul this is actually the original packaging here on the first wave of him here so yeah these were by mcfarland toys you can see the little spawn logo there and everything and uh i got this off of ebay uh literally it just came in yesterday as well as uh, my ringo with i had a, a, another paul bundled with it it was just loose and i didn't pay too much for those but i'm still missing the ship here so yeah as you can see on the back here captain fred is not uh marketed as uh coming with um Paul, you can even see here the classic pairings here. John is with Jeremy, that's the Nowhere Man. George is with the Yellow Submarine. Ringo is with the Blue Mini. And Paul is with the Love with the Glove there. And yeah, and you can see the year, 1999. But yeah, so this is just kind of like, I, I don't know if this was like a, a chase or whatever they want to really call it. But I'm going to leave this one in the box, even though the rest is loose, since this is the original Wave. Uh, it's kind of the obscure one, as well as the packaging is in perfect condition. So, And then to go with that, we do have the nice Lego Yellow Submarine. And this is actually my kid's... Uh, a toy right here uh he got gifted this for christmas uh right around whenever it had come out and so it's not just the ship though all of the little guys are in there and then there's the base the display in front of it as well as a little another jeremy with a green apple which as you all know is very significant with apple records and here is the original box it came in, and it came in damaged, so it's not in good shape, but there's a better look at it. I didn't want to try to pull them out of the ship and everything, but they do come out. And yeah, so that's the set. And this came out. This came out, I think it was probably around maybe 2015 or 16 yeah 2016 right there so yeah this is the instruction book and this is the creator series so whenever they do these it's uh, basically it's like a fan pitched lego set and if you're lucky enough they pick that set and then you know everyone can kind of build whatever your uh, idea was so they've done a lot of different types of these um so here's the fan designer here in the back there's the lego designer and yeah that's just kind of a fun thing that they uh like to do so yeah this is the one i've had Probably the longest out of everything else that I show as am gonna show off today. So this is the full Beatles uh, set of all their albums, CDs, whatever you want to call them. And uh, yeah, this is everything here. It's got a nice little magnetized clasp on there, and this literally covers. Um, their whole career here so I'm gonna go into too much detail just kind of want to show all the CDs here and each one has a nice little booklet in it as well um, to my knowledge I think the packaging reproduces the actual uh, records packaging really well I don't have those so I'm not 100% sure but then each little um, album is bundled with the book in here and it's got like little 
inside stuff, kind of like the time capsule of that album, what was going on at that time. You get some cool little pictures and stuff here. So just kind of a nice thing to have. And of course, if you're a big Beatles fan, anything like this is exciting. I know I've heard people complain about like the sound quality, the, the transfer and all this sort of stuff. Uh, if you're not a huge audiophile type person, I don't think you'll be bothered by it. Um, I've been listening to the Beatles, like I said, my whole life. And I didn't have any sort of issue with it. There wasn't anything that was glaring to me. Uh, I know that um, a lot of um, these sets were bootlegged, though. I'm fortunate enough that mine uh, is not one of those sets. Uh, best way to tell is on a lot of the CDs um, on the back, like for the artists and stuff, there'll be like misspellings of some of the musicians and things like that. So, and then sometimes like the print quality is not so great on uh, some of the stuff as well. So, I know definitely going through all of their music, I like the later stuff a lot more which I think was more um, really reflective of them as artists. Initially, they were just kind of like churned out to put out whatever the record labels put out. Although, a lot of it too, they were just kind of, you know, strung along. And very much under the heel of the companies and things like that. And we'll get to in a minute in particular and so this has all sorts of fun little easter eggs here on it too there's a little jab at the uh rolling stones in this one too there is kind of i believe it was a friendly rivalry between them um i could be wrong but i'm not a hundred percent sure and then i used this image right here later on to reference their faces for some drawings that I did of the group that I'll show you in a little bit. Yeah, but I liked a lot more of the later, just kind of weird stuff, the Magical Mystery Tour. Um, uh, I was surprised to learn that um, well, when you even see it, the, uh, the Yellow Submarine album, most of the stuff on in the movie is not even on the, uh, that soundtrack a lot of the cd is just um it's just um previous releases and then um most of the soundtrack is actually the actual like musical accompaniment like the background music So initially, when you're listening to it like I was, I had never sat down and heard all these records with all these songs before. I'd heard a lot of what was on the radio, but I was discovering um, all the other stuff from them for the first time. But uh, at this time, basically, they had not um, had a good time, I guess, filming uh, the previous movies and so they had signed up to do this one because they could barely be in it and I didn't know as well the voices of all of them weren't even the Beatles um, in the movie so they showed up at the end for the little musical number and um, half the songs were just ones that were on their previous albums and um, yeah so they were just kind of able to um, phone it in a little bit and have it count towards their um their contract to do another movie for that company so and the same too with the records there was um uh, quite a bit of it they were churning out stuff because they were uh required to and you know it took a toll on them you know these guys um certainly have seen a lot of things and done a lot of things experimented with drugs and you know and 
had unfortunate endings with how everything went. Um, but that's just kind of the, the sacrifice, unfortunately, a lot of the times with musicians, you are um, really putting yourself out there. And um, a lot of it, um, you're kind of secondary as a person and just kind of expect it to be on as an entertainer 24-7 in public and all that sort of stuff. So, And these guys, like, they wanted to do the musical side of it a lot, and so they would get frustrated when they would do live shows, and, you know, they couldn't even hear themselves on stage over all the screaming women and stuff. And so a lot of it, they were just getting tired and frustrated with that, which is why they kind of retreated and... Uh, kind of got into, um, I think they, for a period, actually just straight up went over to, I think it was India, and just kind of experienced that culture, and experimented with some drugs as well, and um, had come up with stuff that was totally different than uh, what was being typically just handed off to them, so... Yeah, so this um, was included with this box set here. Yeah, this is like a lot of the singles and stuff here. So I really love most of the songs on this. So this is the one I find myself playing a lot more often than the others. And like I said, the later ones I like a lot too. So although, you know, I do enjoy the radio hit ones from when they were first on the scene. And then, yeah, this also was bundled with the mini documentaries. So it has like interviews and all sorts of stuff um, about them as well. So that's what this is. And then, yeah, about um, a couple weeks ago, maybe I had, whenever I was ordering those other figures, I was like, well, I've been meaning to get this for a while. So this is the uh, graphic novel presenting Yellow Submarine in sequential formatting so yeah this is just once again really beautiful uh it reflects uh the art style very much so from the movie this wasn't the artist trying to um put their own unique style like a different iteration of the work but so this is a faithful rendering of the animated style but done in a comic book format so he was very true to staying on model and the uh, source material here uh, very clean line work and uh, as you'll see when I'll go through here a little bit more yeah they just kind of have some uh, fun interesting layouts in here and all sorts of just you know it it very much reflects how the movie was uh, just kind of very out of this world and yeah, see, here's what I'm talking about with like Ringo's eyes here. He's got this kind of like little white beady eye in the middle of these long black stretches here. So, but yeah, this is the, the full story and there's no um, different ending or anything. It's literally uh, the same as the movie, same grand conclusion and everything with him turning into Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band and all that. Um, and I might do a reading of this in the future if that's something you're interested in. Uh, let me know down below. This would be certainly a fun one to do. And then in the back it shows some of the artist concepts. And I absolutely love... I'll show it to you in a second here. This one right here of them. Yeah, so this is just this regular pencil work, and you can see the blue pencil underneath. So yeah, just really great artist. Really just did a great job. Like I said, realizing um, the animated classic and turning it into a fun little story you can read too. So... And uh, this is one of the next few I picked up, actually, literally yesterday. I was like, well, I'm doing this video. 
if I can find these other books, great. And my shop actually had these all on display bundled for a suggested um, buying. So I was like, oh, great, I have enough to hunt for them. So the first one here is Paul is Dead. So I'm sure uh, if you've been a fan of the Beatles long enough, you've certainly heard this, that Paul possibly had died uh, in a car wreck in that um, they had a look-alike contest at one point, and basically Paul's look-alike is the Paul we know currently after the original one died in a car wreck. So so that's what this uh, book is about here. It's about that whole theory. So, and the art in this book is beautiful. It's painted, I don't know if it's digitally painted or whatever it is, but they have certainly just nailed the look that make it interesting artistically just once again a very beautiful uh, book here different than yellow submarine stuff for sure but still a treat to look at um, and then yeah they even do have some psychedelic stuff in here too this is um John in the studio he's taken something here so this is his POV in him going through a trip here in the back so yeah just kind of a unique experience um yeah and then here's the backwards saying here's the look-alike here this is um uh william campbell shears which i know they talk about billy shears on the album and stuff so and that's the um little help for my friends and so the Beatles, too, they were in on the whole uh, theory as well. So they have in their music and, you know, some of the albums, they there's little Easter eggs and references to kind of feed the theory that the real Paul had died. And yeah, and so the back is concept art here. But yeah, so that's, um, that's what makes it all unique is it's not just them shrugging it off and trying to silence it but actually feeding into the idea as well just kind of adds another layer to it that is um pretty unique the next one was one that i didn't even know was a thing so this one is called the beatles all our yesterdays and this takes a more uh grounded uh, approach to their life story here this is very much um, another book about like the history of the Beatles I think it's the full history maybe even like the formation of the band some highlights along the way all this sort of stuff and so yeah I didn't know this was a book and I picked it up yesterday but yeah this is um one two that just kind of goes through you know the more realistic side here of the group and then in the back it's got a fun little bookmark too so and then on the other side yeah see oh this one makes a nice noise when you tap it too so cover has got kind of an interesting hard but yet thin sort of texture to it next we have the fifth beetle the Brian Epstein story so I didn't even notice the byline here uh, initially I've I've heard of and seen this book on the shelf but didn't pick it up at the time just at being kind of on the pricier side when I did see it and uh, initially I thought it was going to be about um, the original drummer that they had with him. I believe his name was Pete Best, if I remember. And um, he made an appearance on the movie The Rocker, uh, that Rain Wilson movie way back when they show him. I think there's a scene with him and then he might even appear at the end in the credits, if I remember. But at that time, that was the first time I'd ever heard of anyone other than Ringo. Uh, being the Beatles drummer so initially when I saw the fifth Beatle title I thought it was about that drummer and so I see Brian Epstein I was like well that's not the drummer so this was the Beatles um, manager here so this book is about 
um, the work that the manager had done for the group. And uh, yeah, once again, this is a, a biographical one, but done more in a artistic painterly style as opposed to, you know, the line work type of, of s stuff that you typically see with um, um, like historical comic books. Like that one I just showed you was very typical of how you would typically read or present a a work of truth in comics. You know, I call here is just your standard sort of this is us portraying realism. So I like that this is done in a very artistic style here with the painting and everything and a very pleasing and interesting format as opposed to almost static, you know, regular line work, which is which is fine and good. It certainly does the job. But I certainly like when stuff is able to do this it makes it makes the talking heads a lot more interesting so yeah that's what this one is about and i look forward to reading this all three of those i had gotten yesterday just to uh see if i could put them in this video so um of course let me know if this is something you would be interested in me reading in a future video i don't do reading so much uh, at this point uh, i'd like to start doing them again but a lot of it is really roll of the dice, I'll do one, and then it's like a very small viewership, which actually hurts the channel. So Next we have this cool book here. This is called The Beatles Lyrics. And so what this does, this tells right here, this is the stories behind the music. Uh, they have lots of people who have won auctions and bought, you know, notes and lyrics, the actual original copies of the music here. And uh, they've scanned it in and presented it so you can see the actual history behind um, the songs. So, really cool. My wife got this for me, I believe, for Father's Day about three or so years ago. So, just really neat. You get to see, and it's all sorts of people. We've got, like, Paul's handwriting, George's handwriting, John's. Uh, probably even Ringo's too, but I know for sure I've seen bits with all those guys. Yeah, so I was looking in here. This is actually where I had literally just learned about the, um, the Yellow Submarine. Like, all the stuff behind the scenes with them. Just seeing as an easy way out to fulfill a contract, more or less. So that was kind of like, oh, well, that's kind of sad because it's certainly... Like the animation lends to a lot of the excitement of it. And yeah, one of the songs I like, and particularly the Only a Northern Song, uh, this was done tongue in cheek here. This is written uh, by George, and this is just him taking a jab at, uh, oh, well, this is just literally, we're just making another song here. For this company, uh, Northern Records, I guess, was, was part of the people they were contracted with. And I think George had maybe a 3% uh, share or something like that. And I had read it earlier. I don't remember the exact numbers. But basically, he had written this song just to say, hey, it, it doesn't really matter what, what we sing in this song, how we play this song. It's just a song. Here it is. And, yeah, it's just very tongue-in-cheek, and it's directed right at um, one of the companies they were contracted with. So I didn't know that. I had only known, known about um, Apple Records and stuff. So to learn that, that was literally something written just to kind of fly in the face and to voice frustration was interesting. And it's, of course, done in a very kind of flighty and trippy type of way. And then they, he changed some. He says, we wrote it like that instead of I wrote it like that to shift the blame off of himself and put it on the band collectively. Yeah, so right here. 15 cents each. 
minority shareholder in Northern Songs. So Ringo had 1.6 cents, Paul 15. So yeah, just kind of interesting. And then finally, I can show off. Um, this is my portfolio here. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I had uh, done my own renderings here of uh, the group. And so I did these right after uh, I had gotten that full set there, the, the Beatles box set with all the CDs. And so I had just pretty much um, done a marathon listening to them. And I just stayed up listen to uh, as much of them as I could and while I was um, listening to it I was like well I've always wanted to see the Beatles in their yellow submarine outfits with what they looked like in that time since they showed like Sgt. Peppers and stuff like that it's like well we see them in the Sgt. Pepper outfits uh, with photographs taken so what would they look like in their um, yellow submarine outfits and so that's what made me make these and these are all prints the originals I actually gave to uh, Joe Harris and uh, he wrote this series at the time rock stars and I had heard his pitch for that which was all about like rock and roll conspiracies and the supernatural and stuff and so I gifted those to him at uh, Emerald City um, I guess in 2016 since it says 16 down there and uh, yeah, so I make prints of these and sell them for around, I think, 10 a piece plus shipping. Uh, I think they're still up on my art store that doesn't do much since I don't do much with it. But yeah, these are on there, and I think they just print it off and they send them out to you. So, And then, yeah, here's George here. And yeah, I had used that uh, one image of them together in their Sgt. Pepper's clothes. And just kind of um, did my best with my Prisma colors to see how I could take a stab at it and make them look. But uh, that's going to do it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope uh, you're a big Beatles fan like me. Let me know down below what you want to see. And as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.